Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Today I'm going to start off with Psalms 136. Then I'm going to uh, share a video with you that I got off of YouTube yesterday. And it just made my day. It really did make my day. And I had to say, these are the army of the Lord. How do you know that they are the army of the Lord? You shall see. Okay, but first let's open up this lesson with Psalms 136. It is a 26 verse song. And let's begin. Give thanks. I'm sorry, did I tell you today was Wednesday, the 15th of September, and it is 12.58. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To Him who alone does great wonders, His love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens, his love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters, his love endures forever. Who made the great light, his love endures forever. The sun to govern the day, his love endures forever. The moon and stars to govern the night, his love endures forever. To him who strike down the firstborn of Egypt, his love endures forever and brought Israel out from among them, his love endures forever. With a mighty hand and outstretched arms, his love endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea asunder, his love endures forever. And brought Israel through the midst of it, his love endures forever. But swept Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea, his love endures forever. To him who leads his people through the desert, his love endures forever. Who struck down great kings, his love endures forever. And killed mighty kings, his love endures forever. Shehan, king of the Amorites, his love endures forever. Our king of Asian, his love endures forever. And gave their land as an inheritance, his love endures forever. An inheritance of his servant Israel, his love endures forever. To the one who remembered us in our low estate, his love endures forever. And freed us from our enemies, his love endures forever. And who gave food to every creature, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven, his love endures forever. And his love for you is much, 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 I can say the word much until the end of the year, all of next year, for the rest of my days. His great love for you is greater than the highest mountain on the, his earth. It is greater than the love of all your generations towards thee. His love is greater than the love of your parents, than the love of your spouse, than the love of your children. His love is the greatest love of all. Period. Okay. Let me share. We're going to be reading. Let me go back here. About Absalom. You remember Absalom. Saul's son by uh, Maka. He had a son. He had seven wives. Uh, not Saul's son. Um, David's son. He had seven wives. Um, the last one, the seventh wife, was Bathsheba. That was the mother of Solomon. But Solomon uh, Absalom's mom 
was Maka, and Absalom and Tamar are from his wife Maka. Um, Amen. Mother was from one of his first wives. I believe Amin's mother was Abinam. Uh, Let me make sure that was correct. I believe Amin's mother. I should be able to get to to it fairly quickly. I don't want to give you the wrong information because I will be held liable for that. Okay, so Amin's mom was Abinam from Jazrael. That was Amin's mom. Um, and the third wife, which is Meka, um, actually he had eight wives because one of his wives, which is Michael, was um, Saul's daughter. She was the one that God made barren because of her uh, sayings when he was bringing in the Ark of the Covenant into the city of David. She had an issue with the way he was uh, dancing and, and celebrating the arrival of the Ark of the Covenant into his city. So she had an attitude about how he was dancing and disrobing himself in public. So God made her barren. So she was the one and only wife of his that was not able to bear a child. But uh, Absalom was the son of Maka and Tamar was also the daughter of David and Maka. Okay, so uh, Amen came from Ahenium, Ahenium, and I believe that was her only son by David. So he was the one that Absalom had a terrible problem with because of what he had done to his sister. But the interesting thing I always tell you is that whenever you see your enemy fall, the Bible says we are not to be happy when we see our enemy fall. If anything, we are to grieve with them. We are to grieve that they have fallen because it didn't have to be that way. They didn't have to succumb to such a terrible end in their lives. Had they been more fearful of God, then their actions would have not put them in a situation where such judgment would come upon them. So this is why I tell you, my brothers and sisters, that it is a good thing to have a healthy fear for God. You have no need to fear man at all. Okay? It's okay if they think you're afraid of them. That's always okay. Alright? It's okay if they think you're afraid of them. Let them do whatever it is uh, they want to do. Like I always say in my heart when someone is in my face, do your worst. Do your worst and I will show you who I am in the name of God. Do your worst. This is what I say in my heart while someone is breathing in my face. While someone is launching themselves at me. I always say that to, to myself. Do your worst. Because I'm a very quiet individual. When you are in my face, I speak not a word. And I did this all the way through middle school and high school. I never said a word. I saved my strength for when it counted. I kept my peace to the very end. Okay? But as far as your enemies is concerned, 
When you ask God to deal with your enemies and he deals with them, you are not to be in a celebrating mood. Uh-uh. You are not, your joy, your, your, there should be no joy in your heart. Because that same person who has done you wrong has people who love that person. They have parents, siblings, sons and daughters who love them. So as you watch your enemy face their demise, you are also watching their family grieve. And none of this should make you happy. Do you hear me? It should not make you happy. You should not get any pleasure from seeing your enemy fall. From seeing the judgment of God on your enemy. You are not to get any joy from that. And this is why we're reading David responds to Avalon's judgment. Absalom's judgment. This is the way you should respond. Okay? Now, let me share with you what I saw on YouTube yesterday. It is worth sharing. All right. Will you come on for me? This is the Marines. Hi. Let me take it back. All done. I don't know if you can see it so good. This is the American Marine singing. The days of Elijah. Okay? Now do you understand why they are called the army of God? This was in 2018. I'm sorry, 2014. Let me bring you up to... This is the army. This was in 2018, I believe. These are the army of God. They are not praying to Allah or Allah, whatever his name is. They are not praying to Buddha. They are not praying to Hindu or any other fake God. They are praying and singing the song of the almighty God of Israel who walks before them. Should he use this army, these will be the survivors. This is the army. The one I showed you before was the Marine.
That made my day. The army of God. Now, as I watched closely, there were a few bodies that just stood there. I don't know whether they were singing it in their heart. I don't know whether maybe they had religious uh, reasons for not joining in, but there was only a few. So I asked God to cover them anyway. When the, a branch of the army sing unto the God of Israel, that covers everyone in that branch, no matter where they stand. Okay, the first one was the Marines, which I wish I had a, I had a closer shot of it because the, the Marines seemed more enthusiastic, but as you can see, the Army was just in, enthusiastic and singing this song. They weren't singing worldly songs like Booberishes and all that foolishness. They were singing a holy song. Why? For protection. They were singing to the true God of this earth. For what? Protection. Why? Because in their spirit they feel something coming their way. And what does the army of God do? It prepares them. They prepare themselves with his veil. And it covered all those that were not there. So therefore, if this army has to be used, whether it's the Marines or the army, you will see many survivors. Many survivors. Every mouth that opened up to praise God will come home to his family. Both men and women. That made my day. Take a good look. I'm sorry you can't see it that much, but not much I can do about it. There it is. That's a little bit. That's the army of God. Look at that. Many. Enthusiastically. These are my brothers and sisters in Christ. I had to share that with you. Okay? As this world leans towards the left, it has caused an awakening effect upon the land. People are searching for God. The armies are searching for God. And they have found him. He heard that song clearly. He knows everybody that stood there singing. He will reward them for their faithfulness unto him. As he will reward the rest of us for our faithfulness unto him. Because he is faithful unto us. And his faithfulness is beyond that of man's. 
in the same way that his love is greater than man's love towards us, towards each other, his love for us is greater. All right? Let's go into the reading. Um, I'd like to take it from 17. Because in 17, his father is already on the run. And in 17, he gives them the warning to please be gentle with Absalom. He says this a few times. Please be gentle with Absalom. What does that mean? That means don't hurt him. Don't cause him any harm. Did they listen? No. They did not listen to the king. Though they protected the king. I mean, he had a ferocious army. His army was faithful to him up until the end. Okay, and they were a ferocious army. Hard to beat. But there are times when our commanding officers will do their will and not the will of the king. And this is what happened. Okay, so... So we're going to start with 18 in 2 Samuel. Because 18 simply says, in this book it says, Absalom's death. Um, and I myself know how it is to cry for an enemy who has done you much wrong. Much wrong. Okay, let me go to 2 Samuel and see what else it has in the title here regarding this particular episode. <sighs> See if it says anything special in addition. Okay, so Joab is the one who slays Absalom because Absalom is hanging on a tree by his hair. And someone else sees Absalom and tells Joab that Absalom is hanging by a tree. So Joab said, did you slay him? And he said, no, because the king said to be careful with Absalom. Joab was the one who did not listen. The one who visually saw the young man hanging on the tree remember the words of the king, his father. So he reported to the commander, which is Joab. Joab also heard the king's words, but he, he paid it no attention. But Joab has been a very faithful commander to the, to the king. Okay, so here it says, Joab slays Absalom, whose hair is caught in a tree. David moans for his son Absalom. And that's what we're going to read about. Okay, even though he became an enemy to his father. His father loved him like a father should. And you will continue to love your enemy like, like myself, like a wife should. But his judgment will come upon thee. And when it does, like David who shed tears, you yourself should shed some tears also because why? This judgment did not have to be. That's why it's good to have fear of God because that will keep you from doing evil. And the evil you do will return unto thee. This is why it is not good to do that which is evil unless you don't mind it returning to you. Okay, David muttered the men who were with him and appointed them over commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds. 
David sent the troops out, a third under the command of Joab, a third under Joab's brother Hishia, son of Jeruiah, and a third under Ittai the Gishite. Now the king told the troops, I myself will surely march with you. So he wanted to go, and I kind of wish the king would have gone with them. But he listened to his commanders who were trying to protect him, and they insisted that he stay behind. Okay? If he had went, he probably would have saved his son and forgiven him for what he had done. But the men said, you must not go out. If we are forced to flee, they won't care about us. And they were right. Even if half of us die, they won't care. And they were right. But you are worth 10,000 of us. And they were right. It would be better now for you to give us support from the city. Okay? The king answered, I will do whatever seems best to you. So he listened to his commanding officers this one time that I'm sure he always regret. So the king stood beside the gate while all the men marched out in units of hundreds and thousands and of thousands. The king commanded Joab, Abishai, and Ittai, be gentle with the young man Absalom for my sake. That means harm him not for his sake. And all the troops heard the king giving orders concerning Absalom to each of the commanders. All of them heard it. As I said, the army marched on into the field to fight Israel and battle took place in the forest of Ephraim. There the army of Israel was defeated by David's men. They were vicious. And the casualties that day was great, 20,000 men. The battle spread out over the whole countryside and the forest claimed more lives than that day than the sword. Now Absalom happened to meet David's men. He was widening his mule. And as the mule went under the thick branches of a large oak tree, Absalom's hair, head got caught in the tree. He was left hanging in midair while the mule was riding, kept on going. Okay, so he was hanging by his long, beautiful hair. When one of the men saw this, he told Joab, I saw Absalom hanging in an oak tree. Joab said to the men who had told him this, What? You saw him? Why didn't you strike him to the ground right there? Then I would have had to give you ten shingles of silver and a warrior's belt. Joab re remember not the words of his king. He was on straight revenge mode. He was truly upset that his king was on a run as old as he was. And I think that overrode the words of his king, who he was faithful unto. But the man replied, even if a thousand shingles, even if you gave me a thousand shingles, were weight out of into my hand, I would not lift my hand against the king's son. The name of this gentleman is not written. He is anonymous. As many, many anonymous folks are in this book. In our hearing, the king commanded you and Abishai and Etiai Protect the young man Absalom for my sake. So he reminded Joab what the king said. 
And if I had put my life in jeopardy and nothing is hidden from the king, you would have kept your distance from me. Joab said, I am not going to wait like I am not going to wait like this for you. So he took three javelins, and you know what a javelin is? It's a spear. But it's a very, very small spear. Uh, a normal spear is very long, but a javelin is very small. It is the same type of spear that Saul launched at David when he was playing to soothe his spirit at one time, and he missed. And if I had put my life in jeopardy and nothing is hidden from this king, you would have kept your distance from me. Joab said, I'm not going to wait like this for you. So he took three javelins in his hand and plunged them into Avalon's heart while Avalon was still alive in the oak tree. And ten of Joab's army barriers surrounded Absalom, struck him and killed him. Then Joab sounded the trumpet and the troops stopped pursuing Israel, but Joab halted them. They took Absalom, threw him into a big pit in the forest, oh God, and piled up a large heap of rocks over him. Meanwhile, all the Israelites fled to their homes. Mm. During their lifetime, Absalom had taken a pillar and erupted in the King's Valley as a monument to himself, for he thought, I have no son to carry on the memory of my name. He named the pillar after himself, and it is called Absalom Monument to this day. Here's the response of his father. Now Ahimez, son of Zodok, said, Let me run and take the news to the king that the Lord has delivered him from the hand of his enemy. You are not the one to take the news today, Joab told him. You may take the news another time, but you must not do so today because the king's son is dead. Then Joab said to the Cushite, Go tell the king what you have seen. The Cushite bowed down before Joab and ran off. Ahimez, son of Jodak, <coughs> again said to Joab, Come what may, please let me run behind the Cushite. But Joab replied, my son, why do you want to go? You don't have any news that will bring you a reward. He said, come what may I want to run. So Joab runs. Then Ahimez runs by, runs by way of the plain and outruns the Cushite. While David was sitting between the inner and outer gates, the watchman went up to the roof of the gate, gateway by the wall. As he looked over, he saw a man running along. The watchman called out to the king and reported it. The king said, if he is alone, he must have good news. And the man came closer and closer. Then the watchman saw another man running, and he called out to the gatekeeper, look, another man's running along. The king said he must be he must be bringing good news to. The watchman said, "It seems to me that the first one runs like Ahimez, son of Zodak, which was the good one. He's a good man." The king said, "He comes with good news." Then Ahimez called out to the king, "All is well." He bowed down before the king with his face to the ground and say, Praise be to the Lord your God. He has delivered up the men who lifted up their hands against my Lord the King. The king asked, Is the young man Absalom safe? <clears throat> um, Ahimez answered, I saw great confusion just as Joab was about to send the king's servant and me, your servant, but I don't know what it was. He knew what it was, but he didn't have the heart to tell the king what has become of his son. He was indeed a good man. Because, you know, we don't like to bear bad news. Okay? The king said, stand aside and wait here. So he stepped aside and stood there. 
Then the Cushite arrived and said, My lord the king, hear the good news. The Lord has delivered you today from all who rose up against you. The king asked the Cushite the same question. Is the young man Absalom saved? <clears throat> the Cushite replied, May the enemy of my lord the king and all who rose up to harm you be like that young man. Mm. The king was shaken. Those words was enough to let the king know that his son was now dead because he began to violently shake. He went up to the room over the gateway and wept loudly. As he went, he said, Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died instead of you, oh, Absalom, my son Absalom. That is how the king responded. It had to be a very traumatic experience for all his troops. For all of them heard his words clearly, but it was only one who did not honor his words. Only one. It is always important to honor the words of a king. Or in today's word, dignitaries. You are not to put your hand on a dignitary, whether it's a king of the biblical times or a dignitary of this time, because it is not your vote that has put them where they are. It is, has been God has been the total engine that has put them where they are. So they are anointed leaders, whether you like them or not. You are not to slander them. You are not to speak ill of them. You are not to do any of these things, but this, does this world respect God enough? No. And that is the problem. No fear and no respect for God. And like I said to you before, there's only one thing that makes a great nation. One. And that's a nation that honors God. The God of Israel. That is a great nation. There's only thing, one thing that makes an army great and strong and invincible. That is an army A troops of Marine that honor God. That makes them invincible. Let it be that you are among the honorable people of God. Let it be. Thank you very much for listening to us here at Spiritual Order. My name is Brenda Guerrero. And as always, I say these same words to you every day. They're actually a blessing. May the peace of God be upon you. Peace is important. May the protection of God surround you. That's important too. And may the will of God, that's even more important, be manifested in his world, not ours. Thank you for listening. I love you, but God loves you much, much more. Have a beautiful day. And um, if I live and nothing happens, I'll see you tomorrow.